So now that we have an SQLite database, which we can view with our SQLite manager, this here is in Firefox under Tools, SQLite Manager, our database here, Browse and Search, and we see all of our uh, records. Now that we have that, you know, let me show you where the database is, right here under our web directory, test.sqlite is our database. So now we want to be able to insert records into it. Uh, and you do that with this code, db equals uh, new PDO SQLite is the driver. The name of the file is SQ, uh, test.sqlite, which we just saw, which is in this directory. So we just have to type the name. And then we want to insert the member. Let's call a function again, insert member. We'll send it DB and we'll send first name Bob. Zank, and then a score of 78. Okay, and that'll be fine. Now we need that function. We can get that from the MySQL write that we had here. Let's just copy it here. It's exactly the same. And what it does is it just passes the DB object here, which it uses right here. And then it passes the first name, last name, score. It creates an SQL statement, which is a basic insert into members, variable names, values, which are then replaced by first name, last name, score. So it's SQL statement, which we'll see, and then it sends it to the database. So let's see if that works. We go to, here's our database right here. We now have five records. We go to SQL write, we hit reload, and it says that it executed this SQL statement. So Bob Zeng should be in our database. Oops. All right, we just have to refresh it and we see that Bob Zank is here with a score of 78. So that is how we write into the SQLite database. But since we're on the topic of writing with an SQLite database, let me show you how long it takes actually to write. Because SQLite is not very efficient at writing. It's very efficient at reading, but not very efficient at writing. And let me show you an example of that. What I'm going to do is not insert one member, but I'm going to insert 2,000 members into our database. So I've got a little for next loop here, 0 to 2,000. Actually, that's 2001. And we'll call it Bob 1, Bob, uh, Bob 1, Bob 2, Bob 3, etc. Bob 0, Bob 1, Bob 2, whatever. And then we'll just send this here. So we'll have a whole bunch of different records in there. But you will see when I execute this, how long it takes to enter 2,000 records. Here we go. Click. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3. Oh, actually that was pretty fast. Okay, let's add 20,000 records. Here we go. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000, 11, 1,000, 12, 1,000, 13, 1,000, 14, 1,000, 15, 1,000, 16, 1,000, 17, 1,000, 18, 1,000, 90, 1,000, 20. Okay, over 20 seconds. Is it going to come back here? 20,000 records, 20,000 records, fans. How long is it going to take? How long is it going to take to enter all of these records into this file? It might be interesting is to look at how big this file is. 54, let's do a refresh. 289, let's do a refresh. 309, you see how slow it is. It's growing and growing here. 341, 354. Okay, so you can see the problem with SQLite and adding. Okay, it seems to be done here. Okay, so however long it took, probably over a minute maybe, to add these records. Oh, we even got to the maximum execution time. So it wasn't even finished. How many did it get? Only 12,000. In any case, you can see how slow that is. Let me compare it for you to MySQL. Let's take the same statement here in MySQL. So we're going to add 20,000 records into MySQL. So what we want to do here is go into phpMyAdmin, just to see here. 
Okay, here we have our five. Now we're going to go back and we're going to go into MySQL write. So MySQL write. Okay, and we're going to execute it. So the last one took over or took 60 seconds to put in 12,000 records. Let's see how fast MySQL can do. 20,000 records. Enter. Done. What was that? Three seconds? They're all in the MySQL database. Let's look. Browse. Show me at least 30,000. That should show me all of them. It's not going to even be able to display all of them here. Okay, so PHP, my, my admin has some trouble displaying 20,000 records. Let's see if our read site has trouble displaying 20,000 records. Maybe it'll do a little better here. Mm -hmm. So read, MySQL, and it's displaying and displaying and displaying and displaying and displaying our 20,000 records. Just make sure that it actually did add them. But the point is, is that... It took MySQL about, what was it? It took MySQL probably about three seconds. And after 60 seconds, SQLite wasn't even finished with 12,000. So you can see the issue here. Actually reading data out of a SQLite database is in some instances faster than MySQL, just because in SQLite there's a lot less overhead. So when you're choosing a database, if you have a website that just reads a lot of data out of a database, SQLite might be the right choice. If, however, you have a lot of people entering data and the data in the database is constantly changing, then SQLite is probably not the right choice. Some other issues to consider is that since SQLite is just a file, when, for instance, data is being added to it, the whole file is locked. So even if you're just changing 20 records during that time, the whole database is locked and can't be accessed. So if you have a lot of small points of access on your database, if it's constantly being accessed, then MySQL might be a better choice than SQLite. One reason why I like SQLite for websites is that it is fast when it's just reading data. And if you just have, for instance, a website where um, somebody logs in now and then and updates an event or updates some information on it, then it's a perfect database for that very fast. And because it's a file, you put it inside your web and your whole database is in with all of your other files. So you can just zip the folder and you back up all of your files and the database together. So it's a very easy way to do versioning of your website. However, one big issue with SQLite is that it is in itself insecure. It's not secure. It's not protected at all. If, for instance, you have a file in your web directory, anybody can download it from the internet. That's the topic, actually, of the next lecture, is how to protect your SQLite databases.